I raise up my voice, not so that I can shout, but so that those without a voice can be heard. We cannot all succeed when half of us are held back. Malala Yousafzai July 1848 In the first Women's Rights Convention organised by women, 68 women and 32 men signed the Declaration of Sentiments, which sparked decades of activism, eventually leading to the passage of the 19th Amendment granting women the right to vote. 22nd of July 1885, women's suffrage is first introduced into South Australia Parliament by Dr Edward Sterling. This resolution moved in favour of enabling widows and single women who owned property to vote, but not married women. South Australia granted women the right to vote in 1894. Western Australia followed suit in 1899 and in New South Wales in 1902. That same year, women Australia-wide were granted suffrage, the right to vote in political elections, in Commonwealth elections. Strangely, this meant that women in Victoria could legally vote in federal elections but not state elections. At the turn of the 20th century, Australia was considered one of the most progressive democratic nations in the world. In 1902, we became the second country to grant women the vote and the first to permit women to stand for parliament. Indigenous women had to wait until 1962 for the same right. I acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging. Now I'm going to share a timeline around gender equality. 50 years ago, women in the Australian public service finally won the right to remain employed after marriage, overcoming resistance even from their own union. The marriage bar which was lifted meant that women working in education were not permitted to teach after marriage. Women's teaching status was commonly restricted to temporary, as after marriage they were thought to be more likely to follow a career path in the home rather than the education department. After extensive lobbying by the Temporary Teachers Club, this was lifted in 1956. Then, in 1961, the oral contraceptive pill became available. For the first time, women could prevent pregnancy by taking the contraceptive pill. Although initially available only to women with a prescription and a husband, the first contraceptive pill was also burdened with a 27.5 luxury tax. Margaret Sanger, Woman in the New Race says no woman can call herself free who does not own and control her own body. No woman can call herself free until she can choose consciously whether or not she will be a mother. Women demanded the right to drink in public bars in 1965. Then in 1972, women demanded the right to equal pay. A million female workers became eligible for full pay and an overall rise in women's wages of around 30%. Now, if you would like to educate yourself further, I will post a link in the description box with more information about these important dates. So now let's jump forward around 30 years. On the 24th of June 2010, Julia Gillard became Australia's 27th Prime Minister and the first woman to hold the office. Now we jump forward to July 12th, 2013, when Malala Yousafzai spoke at the United Nations and said this, Dear friends, on the 9th of October 2012, the Taliban shot me on the left side of my forehead. They shot my friends too. They thought that the bullets would silence us, but they failed. And then out of that silence came thousands of voices. The terrorists thought that they would change our aims and stop our ambitions, but nothing changed in my life except this. Weakness, fear and hopelessness died. Strength, 
power and courage was born. I am the same Malala. My ambitions are the same. My hopes are the same. My dreams are the same. Dear brothers and sisters, we must not forget that millions of people are suffering from poverty, injustice and ignorance. We must not forget that millions of children are out of schools. We must not forget that our sisters and brothers are waiting for a bright, peaceful future. So let us wage a global struggle against literacy, poverty and terrorism and let us pick up our books and pens. They are our most powerful weapons. One child, one teacher, one pen and one book can change the world. So I have set up a fundraiser and I will be donating to the Malala Fund, which is an international non-for-profit organisation that fights for girls' education. Girls' education strengthens economies and creates jobs. Millions of educated girls means more working women with the potential to add up to 12 trillion US dollars to global growth. Communities are more stable and can recover faster after conflict when girls are educated. You might be wondering why you're watching me create these letters while speaking about gender equality. I have created a new stationary collection called The Women Creating Change. This stationary series was created to celebrate women and continue the conversation around gender equality and body image. These designs will represent women of various ages, body types, ethnicities and disabilities. To be represented in this series, please email me. I will be sharing your stories on my social media platforms. A portion of the proceeds will be donated to the Malala Fund. If you would like to read more about this and get some more information around gender equality, body image or women's rights, I now have this all available over on my website. My collection is also now available. Each month I will be launching new sticker series celebrating women and I'll be donating a portion of the proceeds to the Malala Fund. I am now going to leave you with a speech by Elizabeth Broderick. An Australian Sex Discrimination Commissioner and Commissioner Responsible for Age Discrimination, Australian Human Rights Commission. Let us build on the struggles of those who have come before us to create a world where women are equal partners with men in all aspects of economic, political and social life. Women are able to work and have a family life. Women do not live with poverty because they have chosen to care and where we are free to live our lives without discrimination, harassment and violence. Together we can create a more equal and just Australia. Let's make it happen. Now there is still a lot more we can do, so please follow the link in my description for more information. Thank you for watching and listening.